Big Guru Nation, welcome back to the Clinical Trials Guru.com. I am Dan Sfera. Behind the camera, you can't see him, but you can hear him. Chris Sauber. Trust me, he's there. Hello. There he goes. So, today, a question taken directly from our CRA Academy, a very good question from one of our very own students, Dan and Chris. Please deconstruct a protocol. What is a protocol? I've never seen one. Now, if you're in our CRA Academy, you will see one when you start interning. The internship, you're going to go to a real life site, you're going to see a protocol. But for those of you at home watching that are not in the Academy, you don't have that luxury. Well, you're in luck, right, Chris? Sure, sure. So, we're going to deconstruct the protocol. We're going to keep this short, 10 minutes or less. We'll try. Uh, and then we're going to do a mo much more in-depth podcast, 20 to 30 minute podcast on the same topic. Go to iTunes or Stitcher, random musings from the Clinical Trials Guru. Okay, Chris, let's break it down. What are the components of a protocol? Well, in this particular protocol I'm looking at is the study synopsis. In this, and every order is slightly different, but they're pretty much the same. Study synopsis, it is the Cliff Notes version of the protocol. So, it basically condenses the entire 100 page more or less protocol. This one's 153 pages. This one's 153 and the synopsis is what? Like two pages? Um, Three? Five pages. Five pages, okay. They take all that 150, the most important content that fits into five pages, they put there, that's the study synopsis. Next. Uh, not important really, list of abbreviations. What does list of abbreviations mean? Well, what is I, it? I would assume in this case, uh, to be honest with you, I've never even read that part of the protocol. Huh? We've, uh, we've <laughs> caught you, Chris. Because it's really not necessary for a, a site operator or, or even a CRA to know what the list was. Well, I should say it is important, but they probably know the abbreviations. But it, it would be, for example, the assessments. Oftentimes they're abbreviated. So if you right. were to say CGI, it'll tell you what the CGI is. So basically abbreviations. Mm -hmm. Like everything that's abbreviated in the protocol, they'll, they'll give the full definition. I.e., like CGI, yeah. clinical global. What is that? What's the I? Well, here's the impairment. CGI. Here's CGI. It's a clinical global impression of change. There's another abbreviation used in many Alzheimer study: MRI. Everyone probably knows what an MRI is. Magnetic resonance imaging. That's another abbreviation. We won't spend too much time on abbreviations. So, what's next? Never Gonna run Three out of space here. Is ethics? Yes, you are, because there's 17. 17. <laughs> Go to the podcast, everyone. Okay, ethics. It's very short. Um, it's just uh, three three bullet points and two paragraphs. Okay. Uh, it just is essentially what you would expect. The study will be conducted ethically. That's it. Pretty much according to GCP protocol, blah blah blah. So it's basically the sponsor covering their legal rights. Yeah. And saying, yeah, the ethics. We we took ethics into consideration. Please see good clinical practice and the IRB uh, guidelines. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. That one's that one's simple. Number four is introduction. And you know, since you're not going to know, probably go ahead. What do you think? Uh, it, is? it seems <laughs> like an introduction to the study. Yeah, it's just giving you a rundown on what exactly it is they're studying and like a rationale. It's kind of the same thing you would find in an investigator brochure. Not to go off in a tangent, but it's that's what it looks like. It's the chemical compound, what they're studying, what's the science behind it. The science behind the drug, okay. Uh, what's next? Study objectives. Objectives of the study, pretty important, mm -hmm. wouldn't you say? Yeah. And most studies, every study has an objective, or else why are you doing a study, right? Mm -hmm. So, they usually have primary objectives, secondary objectives. The primary is usually efficacy or safety, and the secondary is usually one of those two things. Maybe even some quality of life assessments. That's exactly what it says here. The primary objective of this study is to evaluate the efficacy of two doses. I'm right on, and I did not cheat. Okay, next. Uh, overview of study design. Okay, is this does this include the schedule of assessments? No. Uh, well, I'll, I'll read the first paragraph. Okay. Subjects will provide written informed consent before any study-related procedures, including washout of disallowed medications, are performed as described in section 6.1. And then it goes on and discusses the study design again. Okay, so it's just more redundant stuff. Right. It's, uh, again, it's very similar. It's, it's just, it looks similar to what you would find in an informed consent, really. 
basically a cliff, another Cliff Notes version of the protocol. Yeah. Okay, next. Uh, study population. And this includes the inclusion and exclusion criteria. Oh, okay, so that would be important. You got the IE criteria. It basically tells you who's qualified to do the study, who's not, who they're targeting, who should be included, who should be excluded. Mm -hmm. exactly. If you want to learn more, go to the podcast. There's other videos on it as well. Okay, what's next? Study evaluations. What's that? Uh, schedule of assessments. Okay, my favorite. That's my favorite thing. I, I tell everyone. Yeah, it's 80% of the study right here. Yeah, if you don't, if you're assigned, if you're a monitor, if you're a coordinator, if you're assigned a brand new study and you didn't have time to study the protocol, I would go to the schedule of assessments, right? What was the actual section called? Study evaluations. Study evaluations. I don't think anyone's going to be able to read my writing. Schedule of assessments, my favorite thing. It's a one page cheat sheet. You can tape it on your office. It, li it breaks down every visit and every assessment and it has a check mark next to every one for that visit. Number nine is study drug. What does it say? It just talks about the drug? It talks about how it will be supplied, how it should be stored, okay. you know, how it will be shipped, okay. blind Good. blinding, logistics, technical administration, okay. yeah, all that. Okay, what's next? Uh, number ten is adverse events. Adverse events. Uh, what do they say about adverse events in there? It's just stating that all adverse events will be captured. Okay, as per GCP, it's stating all AEs will be captured. It defines what an, a, what an AE is. Can you define it? If people are listening, they, they can hear real quick. An AE is any untoward medical occurrence associated with the use of a drug in humans, whether or not considered drug-related. Thank you. That means an AE, if I'm in a study and I go to a restaurant while I'm in the study and I choke on a chicken bone, and I go to the hospital, that's an AE. It might be an SAE. It's to anyone, it might be an SAE. To anyone um, with common sense, it's not, but in research, you've got to document it. Mm -hmm. Okay, next. Documentation of data. That's literally next? Mm -hmm. Couldn't have scripted it better. Explain what that is. Um, so it's just how you capture the information, the data that you obtain in the study, and what you do with it. And everyone should know Alcoa. Mm -hmm. If you don't Google it, we're not going to go through that. But all of our CRA Academy students know what that is. That's documentation standards for every industry, but research uses it a lot. Okay, next. Uh, statistical and analytical plan. Which basically no one needs to know. And I'm just... <laughs> <laughs> we're keeping it real with you guys. No one needs to know this unless you're a statistician. Right? Uh, so we can skip that. Well, I would say if you're a CRA, you should always read the entire protocol once. Ah, good disclaimer. Okay. But really, you probably could do without reading this part, it's but you still should read it. Because sure. you never know what might be buried in here that you do need to know. Sure. Okay, statistical plan. Alright. Next. Uh, moving on down. This is actually kind of a long section. Number 13, regulatory and ethical issues. Regulatory. Okay. Regulatory is pretty easy. I don't know. What Regulatory is straightforward. 1572, um, financial disclosure forms, IRB questionnaires, ethical issues. They probably say something about following good clinical practice and following uh, your IRB guidelines. Yeah, exactly. It discusses the IRB will be notified of everything. And exactly what I said. We'll okay, receive next. approval from IRB for everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, next. We'll, and we'll dive deep into this on the podcast. Number 14, almost done. Okay. Study commencement and discontinuation. When the study's over, you'll have a closeout visit. Or, if the sponsor decides to stop the study, they're going to follow what's in the protocol. So, either a closeout visit, planned closeout, or a sponsor decided abruptly we're ending the study. One of those two things, right? Mm -hmm. Or, your particular site is singled out and you're stopped because of whatever reason. Okay, next. References. 15 is references. And I honestly don't know what that is. It's just a list of people that contributed, I would assume, to the development of the trial. Okay, so they give credit to mm -hmm. contributors. Okay, mm -hmm. it's not important. 16 supplements. What appears discussing things that can be taken for this indication. Like actual supplements? Mm, no, they're drugs. Okay. Comparative so, treatments? Yeah, that's what it seems to be. 
So they're just including that standard care, yeah. current standard care of treatment that's approved? Yeah. That's what it appears. And is it because in this study they're using those drugs or? Um, yeah, to be honest with you, I don't know. Okay, so it could be either or, because we've seen both. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. last one, you said there's 17? the appendix. Ah, appendix, which I guess is good for? Contains all the assessments and just everything that's used in the trial source-wise. You can look it up in alphabetic order in there. Uh, well, it's an alphabetic no. order. It just contains the assessments that are used. Okay, so that's it. We're going to dive deep into this on the podcast. Thank you, Guru Nation. A protocol deconstructed. Thank you, Chris.